What's going on everybody, this is Tatro, and today I wanna to show you how I created this live beat with the Novation Launch Key Mini. And Ableton Live. If you haven't seen the live performance, go ahead and click up here, watch the performance in a new tab, then come back to the tutorial. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. All right, so let's get into how I made this beat with the Launch Key Mini and Ableton Live. All right, so as you can see from the session, there are six different instruments in this session. If I just go from left to right, this isn't the order they appear, but close enough. I have a vocal sample. Next up is a drum rack. So if I hold shift and press drum, now I'm in drum mode. Kick, snare, ride, and then like another snare there. Also, the reverb is turned up all the way for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. There we go. And then we have just kind of a plain operator that I arpeggiate. Now for this session, my arpeggiator is set to up, down, 16th notes, and latch. So with latch on, meaning I don't have to hold down the chord. Then I can also adjust with this knob, the dry wet of the pedal. And I should note that I'm able to do that with that knob because the entire session, if I hold shift, the knobs are in custom mode. So I've mapped each of these knobs and I'll talk about what they do as I go along. Next up, scrolling over. I'm scrolling, by the way, by holding shift and track right here, navigating left and right, which will arm the tracks as we go. Here is like a main pad synth that I play the chords on. When you first hear it, it doesn't have a lot of bass, and that's because I've got this knob here mapped to the low cut. So I cut out the lows when this first comes in. And then as it plays, I bring that bass back in. Moving right along, we have another vocal sample with an arpeggiator on it. You'll notice that in both of those vocal samples, I didn't transpose them at all. I just left them in whatever key they're in and I adjust where I play on the keyboard. So while this piece is in C, I'm actually playing a B flat chord here. I guess it was just kind of lazy, but it was easy enough. And then next up here, we have the loop that plays while the whole session is happening. This makes it so I don't have to listen to a metronome to start the track. I can just launch this clip here. And this is enough to keep me in time. And the first thing that enters is that arpeggiated operator. So if I navigate down to an empty clip using the scrolling buttons here and shift, I can press play and the shaker clip will play. Press record and turn the arpeggiator on. Now with the built-in arpeggiator, it's important that if you're gonna loop a sound like this, that you turn it off right after you're done recording or else it'll keep arpeggiating and it'll be playing over the notes. And as you can see here, since the arpeggiator is built into the controller, Ableton Live is getting the notes individually. It's not just getting that chord that you're playing that you would if the arpeggiator was on the Ableton side. So if you leave the arpeggiator on, it just clashes. That changes once you navigate away from it, but you could risk arpeggiating a different instrument as you're navigating around the set. A main function of how I run these sets is being able to scroll through the tracks and having them arm as they go. It means I don't have to manually arm a track, I can just navigate to it and record something. The next step of this beat was to navigate over to the drums, which I did. Having the knobs to adjust sort of the sound as I go is a great way to keep the performance lively because if I'm navigating around, I can't necessarily play musical ideas at the same time, but I can do something as simple as turn a knob, which has an effect on the piece. So I navigate over to the drums, at the same time switching from session mode to drum mode. And then I just play a ride pattern. 
record that. And it's actually so helpful that there's now a record button on the launch key and there wasn't before. So you would have to switch back from drum mode or note mode on the old launch key to launching clips all in one motion if you wanted to live loop. Now there's just a record button, so it was easy enough. After the ride loop is sort of recorded, I move over, like I said, to these pad sounds, but with that low cut turned up. Record that pattern and then slowly bring down that filter so it ends up sounding like this. Super effective to be able to bring in a bassier sound like that without actually having to play a bass line or launch a new clip. Now after that, I have the ride playing, right? And I'm still in note mode with the pads or drum mode. So as I'm scrolling around, you'll see that they change to the color of the, the instrument that I'm on. But I navigate back over after this. And as I bring in that bass, I overdub record onto the clip that already exists by pressing record, overdub. I recorded some reverb automation on there. Don't worry about that. But you see that the notes are overdubbed onto the clip with the ride. So now I have kick and snare. Next up, I just hold shift and navigate over to the vocal sample, a very simple pattern. and I record that as a loop. And I get most of my samples, well, I get pretty much all my samples that I don't record myself, I get from Splice. Splice has been a great resource for me because I love injecting vocal samples. I mean, you can tell because in this session there's two instruments that are vocal samples, but I just think it gives it a human element to the electronic. So like I said, here we have another loop. But before I get to that loop, I'm actually triggering some effects. So let me play you what I have right here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that reverb automation. I don't need it. So this is a basic, the basic pattern, right? And by this time, I believe I've navigated back to session view. Remembering that these knobs are all custom. So the first three are actually mapped to this master beat repeat, which gives me a nice stutter effect. That's the quarter note. 8th note, 16th. This one here we talked about, that's the uh, low cut on the pad sound. The next knob I actually don't have mapped to anything, I don't know. I guess I just forgot to. And the last three, so I have this sample magic performance rack here. This knob's a low cut. This knob's a high cut. It's also got a bit of a bit crusher on there. And the last knob is what we talked about before, the sample on the operator. Not the sample, the pedal on the operator. Map to the dry wet. So those controls right there give me enough improvisation to play with as the session goes on. You'll notice that for the whole session, my pads are set up with the clips at the top, unless I switch to playing drums. And I set the bottom mode to stop clips because that's most helpful to me as I'm playing the session. I'm not soloing anything. I'm not muting anything. I also don't need access to a second row of clips. So I have stop buttons so I can stop each individual clip as I go. In terms of mini MIDI keyboards, this is the best Ableton Live mini MIDI keyboard that you're gonna get. I mean, you have access to all this built-in functionality, arpeggiator, but also control over session view, which is crucial when you're writing. And it's control in an effective way. It's not, you know, just, just a launch pad. It's more than that. You have functionality here. Stop, solo, mute, launching clips, navigating around the project with left and right, up and down, scene launch, and then all the functionality of the knobs. Even though I was only using custom mode here with my eight or seven custom mappings, I could have very easily switched over to volume and faded things in and out or sends. It gives you the most control out of any mini MIDI keyboard that I've seen. So that's how I created this beat session with the Launch Key Mini.